All right. Uh, my name is Ryan Matthew Ziegler, and I'm one of the actors in The Benevolent Buckley Show, and I'm joined by writer-director Tyler Am and star ugh, mm. uh, Joe Buckley. And uh, to celebrate the one-year anniversary of The Benevolent Buckley Show, we thought we would do some commentary tracks. Because we can't afford a season two. <laughs> well, no, there's unfortunately. That. <laughs> You're not wrong there. But uh, we're going to do some a commentary track over these episodes to kind of give you some insight in what went on uh, in the creation of this much beloved by a half dozen people at least well, the Buckley show yeah, I mean we got some good views that's always good oh actually well, what is that uh, almost 4,000 on the first episode uh, episode so. one yeah, that's, that's not, not bad, bad. We came in hot on this one. Yeah, we did. Well, p- people watched the first episode, and then, I, as you can see on episode two, 2.2 thousand, <laughs> yeah. 1.9 on three, it just stinks. Yeah, it goes. <laughs> well, you know, such, such is the internet. Such is the fickle mistress that is uh, YouTube, I suppose. It, yeah. It'll reach cult status in 2049. Yeah, yeah. Well, the second Joe is in the news for doing something awful. Yeah, for tasing a dead rat or people, something. People will research, and they'll come across the show. And I don't think, think that's newsworthy. <laughs> oh, I think it would be. No. No, what's newsworthy is that Joe thought he was uh, tasing a dead rat, and it was actually a raccoon. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know rodents. <laughs> no, no, I don't care for them. They're furry, and they keep biting me, like my cats. Well, anyways, the initial idea for this series was um, conceived of way back in, like, 2015. Yeah, uh, during whenever we were making our movie Grace's Room, I think we were yeah. talking about oh, it. Oh, yeah, even. by the way, I'm, I'm Tyler. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's Tyler. I don't want to be misconstrued as Joe. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely, no. No, you can tell it's Joe because I'm very loud and just always yelling about yeah, something. Yeah, by the time the episode starts, from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, it was like I I had kind of, I wouldn't say I pitched the idea, but I just thought it would be funny if Joe did like a Eric Andre-esque um, show but played it, com- it completely straight, no like giant sight gags and crazy things happening. Just Joe like interviewing regular people like a barber and things like that. People who wouldn't understand Joe or... Uh, I don't know. I was gonna say Joe's sense of humor, but just Joe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we were going to almost do it as just like a like late night like Cohen type show, even or Conan. <laughs> yeah, sorry. you know the Cohen brothers late yeah. night talk show. <laughs> yeah. it, wait a minute, the Conan show? I didn't know Conan the Barbarian had his own show, Joe. Interesting. Uh, well, how did I miss this one? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Conan O'Brien? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they they gave the cavemen Geico ad a show. So who they knows? did actually have a show. Yeah, for yeah. a short while. This would have been the equivalent of that. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. But um, anyways, I I just thought it was funny, and we had loosely discussed the idea, Joe and I, um, amongst others. But then, I, uh, after we shot our third feature length indie, we had uh, a lot of downtime and little money. Yeah, yeah. After Butcher the Baker, and uh, realized that maybe it was time to dig this thing out of the grave. And along with Nick Swartz, um, who is the uh, production designer on the, sh- the series. Um, you'll see the great set that he built. Yeah, yeah. Um, he kind of helped develop the concept and get things going along with Joe. I would say he definitely did more work than Joe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's a very good special effects man. I mostly just read off of a paper. Yeah. Badly. Well, it, it barely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, so that's kind of how we got. I think we, geez, I mean, we, we just started dis- discussing this in like late September, early October of 2017. Yeah. And then we, we had the whole thing shot. Couple by, months, maybe three by, months. By December. Yeah, it came together very, very quickly. Once, well, yeah, once well, pen was put to paper. Uh, yeah. Less than that. I mean, it was it was October, and we shot this. The first, the bulk of it was shot the first weekend of December 2017. Yes, that's true. And then there were a couple of pickups uh, in early January. And then it, it was came, released January 15th of that yeah. of 2018. So this was very quickly. Yeah, and but not not to say that for um, uh, lack of quality. I think this is probably one of the tightest things we've ever made. Oh, I love this. I mean, it was specifically built for the lack of money we had, and um, you know, basically just trying to do something uh, inexpensive but fun and funny. And we shot it over two. Well, it was supposed two to days. be. It was supposed to be like a little over two days, but then because we shot this in a um, a community theater. Um, uh, on a community theater stage, uh, the guy who was helping us get organized in the building failed to realize that they were doing uh, the nativity. Um, yeah, yeah, like the, the first day we were shooting, and so we couldn't get in until that <laughs> evening after they finished the nativity. That's right. Yeah, and so we had a day and a half, and so we we crammed all six episodes in that day and a half, and it was it was fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and like this this incredible set you're about to see, like Tyler said, is on the stage of the local community theater and it was actually behind the nativity set 
Yep. Yeah. And you, you know, can tell which one was Because it was the first weekend in December, and that was one of the things that they did around Christmas time is people would come to the set, check out the nativity. So there was, you know, even though there was, it looks like there's a ton of room, there really wasn't a ton of room on that stage no. when all was said and done. And it looks very spacious and it looks amazing, but really it was it was pretty close uh, confines. Yeah, we did a good job of trying to mask the, the idea that we were on a stage because... It's the, I don't know what the different level of curtains are, Ryan, you might be able to help me here, but like the front curtain was shut. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the main, like the main the main curtain. Uh, oh, actually, I don't even think it was the front, I think it was like the middle. Um, because, yeah. Because we wanted it to keep the um, the curtain close um, as it, at, like it was just like a backdrop to catch sound or something like that, mm-hmm. it was how we were playing it off. Yeah. At least as far as the, this, because this is technically supposed to be like a fake, uh, like local station, like a public access style thing. As you'll see, WQVT9 is all over um, the intro video, and then um, yeah, they I, made a ton of like little fake posters. Yeah, and stuff fake with posters it. for other shows and things like that. And so we're playing it off like it's a small, like I don't know, I, I, I don't, yeah, just kind of local scene. Yeah, local production, and mm-hmm. and uh, somehow they gave Joe Buckley a show. Actually, Ryan's character is the manager of the station. Yeah. Um, who I did I don't know if in the lore did you green light this thing or did you inherit it? Well, no, because I, I think that I inherited it because later on in uh, episode five, oh, when, yes, when yes. I'm when I'm being interviewed, I reference that Joe was like the bagel boy. He was a delivery boy. And in my mind, Joe was showing up as a delivery boy and, you know, quipping. And for some reason, the station owner took a liking to him, got to talking to him, talking about old school horror movies. And he saw an opportunity to, you know, exploit Joe essentially and give him a show. And then that's how we get the Benevolent Buckley show is that very little money was put into the show. You know, so the crew is kind of meh about everything. The actual uh, stage producer, Nick's character, is is kind of mad about it, and I hate it. My character despises every moment of this show. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's like true to real life too, because that's you're like a method actor. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, when I hit Joe, it I'm hitting Joe. <laughs> yeah. Those are my favorite scenes, where when my fist could connect to Joe's flesh, always. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and a big component <laughs> of the show was um, we really beefed up the uh, the. Um, Oh gosh, the supporting characters—I don't know what to call them—but the, the stage crew, and I think at first people were a little bit like, "Oh, give us more Joe." But I think as each episode went on, they realized, "Oh my gosh, these guys are just as funny," and it really feeds into what's going on. And like you know, having a bunch of people there to say, "Joe, you're a jackass." Yeah, yeah. Let's put Joe underneath the desk for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can start the episode in three, two, one, play. So, oh, a uh, very good uh, theme song, too. Yeah, by, I was just going to say, um, yeah. theme song done by Billy Niebuhr of uh, Nashville, Tennessee, um, and uh, Sean Patrick Walsh, um, the, uh, oh gosh, I don't know what, the stage band. Yeah, we're um, actually going to see him in a minute. Yeah, the or what do they call it? Not the stage band. What am I trying to say? Uh, the people on the drums in, like, the no. uh, David Letterman. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, the, the house, house band. The house, the house band, band. okay. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, Sean's the one singing. He also plays the guy, the character of the house band. There, there, right, is, there right he is. There. Yeah. Beautiful man. Oh, his beard <laughs> is so luscious. Yeah. But anyways, oh, Dr. Erla Meyer, who was a highlight that we really kind of forgot about as episodes went on. <laughs> but it's such, I love Dr. Erla Meyer. The first time I saw saw the puppet and the construction of the puppet, and then I just, I loved it. And then yeah. in in action in the episode, because of course I, I wasn't around for all of the shooting. So I didn't even, I don't think I even saw the Erlenmeyer stuff being yeah. photographed, but seeing it in the episode, I, I loved it. Yeah. Well, because he doesn't have legs. Uh, you stick like your arm up his trench coat. Uh, so like I, he wouldn't be able to move around the set and stuff like that. So no, he had to kind of just stay there. And it, may, and it makes sense for, you know, the idea of like um, your Andy Richter or whatever on yeah. the show just to yeah. stick him in the corner. Yeah, yeah. But the guy that was sta- uh, talking with Joe initially, um, that was Nick. Who designed the set and Dr. Erlenmeyer? Yeah, no, very good. It's like kind of like uh, plastic foam walls with like kind of like uh, stuff like cut into them to make them look stone and painted. Yeah, and kind of textured uh, to look oh, really that nice. Oh, set is just uh, I love the set. Uh, yeah, there he is, and we did that over like uh, I, well, Nick did most of the work. I kind of just he gave me a brush and told me to paint. Um, we did that over like two days just just before shooting. Yeah, um, which was well, okay, there were some late nights. There he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In oh. character, yeah. For the viewers at home, let me introduce. So, but most of this is in, incredibly. Uh, well, I was about to say it's incredibly well written. What I mean to say is that it's <laughs> it's it's all it's it's written. There's no like improv in this stuff, um, except for a little bit of goofs like right here. But for the most part, this is all written. The lines and everything that Joe is saying, that the cast is saying, 
or the, I mean, the stage hands. Yeah, no, no. Everything in the main bulk of the episodes is all written down. The Except only for the um, guest interview. part. The guest yeah. part, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the interview, yeah, those are fresh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, it's like Grand Tomatoes. 100% fresh. And so, like, there's, you'll easily, you'll easily um, see uh, references to things. It, well, it just, it feels like the Eric Andre show or something. I don't know, but probably for most modern audiences, that's going to be the most direct connection. But realistically, what we were trying to do is... Um, Sven Gulli? Sven Gulli, Elvira, that mm-hmm. type of stuff. The, I don't know what you call them, like the midnight horror people. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the cable, the you know, every every major... Dr. Evil. Yeah, every major market, you know, starting in the 60s on had horror hosts. You know, late night horror hosts where they would buy packages of like either... Public domain They'd either have public films. domain movies or they'd buy like Universal Dirt Package. Cheap. And, you know, you always had... Uh, a host, a horror host, come in, doctor, whatever. A lot of times they were doctors or professors or whatever. And yeah. They do jokes and stuff. And Sven Gulli, you know, is probably the most famous right yeah, now. Yeah, I think he's bigger than Elvira. Pop culture-wise. So we just kind of wanted to do like a little spoof of, of that show that you, would, you wouldn't you would see unless you were in one of those areas that had like a small, like public access style yeah, midnight you'd, horror host thing. Yeah, you'd have to be in Chicago, like in like 1983 to see this. Yeah, and, and the idea that it's it's modern and the concept is that it's Joe is incompetent and it doesn't work and you get to see stuff behind the scenes. And one of the things I love so much about Tyler and Nick's script is... is the the features of each show like potion of the day and uh the the artifact i can't remember the names of all of them um, like the, 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 yeah, the unholy unboxing, unholy unboxing yeah. and these great features yeah like creature feature creature feature and oh this is a uh, feature some amazing uh, art um by, done by brian michael hartnett um, who has participated in some of our feature projects, um, providing some like uh, art that I would then animate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a full animated sequence in uh, Benevolent or uh, the the Butcher the Baker's. Butcher the Baker's, Grace's room. Um, but then a couple of these episodes have uh, these like little animated bits, basically comprised of just you know Brian would do some drawings and then I just do some minor, you know, animating, just moving it in Premiere. Yeah. Uh, but they're they're really. You know, I don't know. I just love these things because it, it feels so lo-fi, but it still looks good. Oh, I, yeah. I, I love the animated sequences. Yeah. Some of my favorite stuff. It's just great production value. Yeah. Oh, so the little lady right there running uh, is <laughs> Cheyenne. Um, she was like a... As far as our core group, she was of, a newcomer. Yeah, of our ding dong, she was like the newest person. Yeah, and she just jumped in right away, and I think she kind of once she met Joe, especially, she kind of understood mm-hmm. what we were going for. And I had never met her, but I had seen her do a local play, and I had done, um, I had been in at least one play, one or two plays with her boyfriend, Matt. Yeah, so. and, and uh, I mean, everybody that was involved in this project was was amazing. There's uh, Blue yeah. Hair Girls, Emily. Um, you'll, you'll really she like She gets some good stuff in. Oh, yeah, you'll see it in an upcoming episode. It's something, oh. Oh, she got the best moment. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm envious of, of her moment later on in the uh, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and we have like a really good sense of continuity with this because later on the lights are. Oh my gosh, that beat. was really hard. Yeah. Now these potions are. This is oh, not they were a bit. Disgusting. Joe had no idea what were in these potions. These potions were concocted uh, off stage, and he. The only thing we promised Joe is that it won't kill him. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. it, though. We're not and saying that was... is it. It's not toxic enough to kill you, but that's it. And so well, Joe had no idea what was going to be in each potion. This is not fake at all. Individual ingredients that you could eat, but yeah. not things that you would want to eat together no. or no, drink no, together. No, you guys did manage to burn a little hole in my tongue wow. with uh, acid. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, that that one had malic acid in yeah. it. Yeah, that um, was so fun watching the, those being sure, concocted sure. backstage. Everybody asked um, in the comments and after seeing it, like what was in it. And for some reason, I remember having a really good argument for not wanting to list all the ingredients. And I can't remember what it is anymore. So then people would ask, well, what is it? And I'm like, I honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. And I yeah. don't know why we don't have it listed. Yeah. I, I think that first one, I want to say there was like well, nerds or something in there. Right. Or Pop Rocks? Maybe pop there's Pop Rocks. Pop Rocks, rocks yeah. to get fizzy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My mother actually sewed this up. Your mother made the crunchy towel? Yeah. 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 Well, oh, uh, yeah. Nick like put the elements together. And then, and then after, my mom sewed it. He tried to do something to connect. I think it was basically just hot glue and it didn't work. Yeah. And so uh, Mama Buck, she sewed it together at the last minute. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Always good in a pinch, that mama buck. Oh yeah, no, I I hug my mama. Oh, actually, she's featured in the in the show because yeah, she she, call, she calls she's in a couple oh, times. That's right. Oh, and there's yours truly coming in. <laughs> oh, he's so handsome. I've never seen such a lovely man. He actually is a really man. good looking guy. Look at him. Oh yeah, coming in yelling at people. That's my uh, bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seems to be the thing I'm cast. <laughs> Anytime I do something like it's always somebody yelling and angry. I'm yeah. all right with it. You do it good. You Thank do it really you. good. It's fun. It's very cathartic. It Screaming at Joe is a, is a great time. Yeah, you're like Klaus Kinski. I don't need a sidekick and a goddamn puppet. Whoa, whoa. 
And that's a good bit that I think maybe some people lose. Yeah. The only thing good about this show. The only thing- uh, poor Sean's going in a couple minutes. We won't see him for a little bit later. Well, there he is. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I think he'd... Dad, dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. But yeah, as far as the structure of the shoot, I think... Um, I can't remember the... Or we shot basically the equivalent of like three episodes a day, or, or maybe it was two the first day and four the second. But the second day entirely, we shot all of the... Two, three, we, and we four. We shot all of the... Um, in front of the cam, quote unquote, in front of the camera oh, stuff right. um, on the set, and then we did the reverse angle of the crew. Yes. And so when Joe was talking about continuity, it was insane because everybody had outfits for every single episode. Yeah, we had but, to go hurry up and change. Yeah, except but, for oh, me, I right, had a cloak. Yeah. yeah, and so I do. I don't know how we got that straight because it was such a messy shoot. Um, as far as like we had so much to do in such uh, such a little time, and everybody <laughs> was super positive about everything. That was the best part. Everybody was just great. Oh yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Doing this and Dominique, um, who's the she in the boom show? Mike? D- what? She's the boom, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Dominique, the the microphone operator on the show, not the actual sound guy. Um, she was sick for like most of this, and so like you'll see in later episodes, she's just sitting in a chair <laughs> with a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> but it works. But it works great within the context of the actual show. Like the crew would even not give a shit. Yeah, know? exactly. Oh, poor Sean. <laughs> Sean wrote a bunch of songs for like uh, different components of the show, like the different like little features and things like that. And I, I don't, I think we we did like two of them. <laughs> I love that Casio guitar thing though that he has. That's yeah. so cool. Oh my gosh! And that's his. Vintage. That's, that's Sean's uh, own. He owns that. I mean, if if Sean could dress like that and wear that all the time, I feel like that's that's his spirit yeah, animal. He yeah. would do oh, that. Oh, he would get booked in so many different places. He always puts in 150 percent into everything. Exactly. I've done a zillion plays with him over the years, and it's always you never have to worry about him. No. And even if it's like he he shows up late. He looks like he just woke up. It's like <laughs> as soon as that camera's on, boom. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Lights, camera, action. He, yeah. he tears it up. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. And the unsung heroes of this whole thing are um, Tom, Zach, and Nate. The, yeah, the, camera, the camera guys in the show, but also the actual yeah. camera guys of the, film, the, of, the, um, ep, or of the series. And they, they, oh, my, they were so fucking funny. Um, that's how, actually, sometimes we did throw in bits of stuff that they would just be doing, like mucking around back there and be like okay well let's when we get the cameras on you we're gonna have to film that <laughs> yeah no, they got some good improv type stuff in and i and i think nick is great i mean nick is not known as an actor per se no he, he was is, um, he's great in this he was he a creature it. in yeah. butcher the bakers yeah. you know um, but otherwise he doesn't really act too much but he's he's great in this it's just he's he really he understands being uncomfortable um, because he's usually always uncomfortable, and it really, it really, <laughs> it really um, works on the show. Yeah. No, and uh, let me tell you, I can tickle him if we need a really uncomfortable scene God. in the future. If we do season two. But um, this, yeah, this is such an awkward, sad thing. Is Sean getting fired from the show? Yeah. <laughs> episode one, just because everybody likes Sean more than Joe. Yeah. yeah. And I can't have that on my set. God, and like even like when the camera just panned over and you see all that <laughs> shit to the left, it's like you can't even be bothered to frame everything and. Oh gosh! Release the guest. Special guest. I love I love all these little things. I mean, and I, I edited them, and uh, so I that that him pulling down that in the sparks. That's one of my favorite little bits. Yeah, yeah it's so definitely. Cool. Uh, is that like a nod to Bride the Frankenstein? Hello there, Mister. Um, I don't. I think we just knew that we wanted to have some some element that Illinois and interacted with that would bring the guest out. Um, but um, actually, Brian was the I think third or fourth person. We tried. We had oh. guests scheduled for every episode, and uh, the first person couldn't make it due to um, it, they were they were coming from down south, way down south, and couldn't make it. And then we, gosh dang it, we got somebody else. Um, who was it? Uh, you know. Gosh darn it! I can't remember. No, I can't remember. And then they had to cancel last minute. It was very last minute. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And then there was another person that we couldn't, we couldn't, we asked, they couldn't do it. And then Brian was like, oh, I'm game. Except Brian, Brian's just a guy. He was in one of our movies. Yeah. And so we're like, well, yeah, make, he gets his hand chopped off. Yeah. Make up a character for this. And so we thought maybe an author would be really funny. And, and it, Brian just killed it. I mean, like, you know, this was his first time, I think, really meeting Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been. And I, I knew Brian initially. I did a play with Brian uh, on that exact stage a couple of years ago. And he was, he's a funny dude. Great guy. Um, always game to do projects, you know, so. 
And he, so he's he's playing a character. Now, other episodes, yeah, are just people. it's people. It's yeah. real people playing themselves. But in this case, because of the last minute thing. Yeah, we, we had, had like to, all like author jokes and stuff and all that was. Well, the, the conversation is still, um, we, we basically helped, we wrote some uh, like questions you would ask. Yeah. But Bri- or, yeah, Brian would still go for it himself. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's answering these questions with improv in character. He's, there was no, he hadn't had, Brian didn't have any lines written for him. He's just in character answering Joe's questions. Yeah. So this this is uh, you know oh fully... the outfit is perfect for yeah. like that kind yeah. of like nobody know nobody's actually ever read your books yeah um, but you still act like people are reading your books yeah like I, uh, Stephen King light except he never wrote like Carrie yeah yeah I call it the meteor that almost hit Earth so we actually um, I designed yeah, got the books. I designed those book covers but then we had, we printed them out wrapped them around a book took a picture of the book photoshopped out the background and cuz for some reason it just when I put the cover up there it looked too fake. Yeah. And so Well it looks three dimensional there cuz you got the you got the shine yeah. you know like it would be yeah. on the uh, the jacket. You yeah, know we've got the books in the bookshelf in the level at movies. Oh yeah and the um, the series we do uh, they're in the background. Yeah. They're they're collectors items now. I, I actually, Yeah yeah. I can't remember what the actual books are inside the um, T- yeah. cover. I, I actually ended up with a bunch of props from the I show because Tyler threw out some stuff that we, he, we didn't need, so I took it. If you'd like to donate uh, $1,000 mm. to season two, you oh, could we'd probably- love to do another uh, season. Oh, we probably, can give you all kinds of you stuff. You could probably get one of those books yeah. for $1,000, so uh, keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And again, like this is like, we, like we've made three feature indie films, and like not that we're not proud of those, but this is just like, it's so tight, like it's for-, it, for for what it is, there's it, uh, you can tell we put everything we had into it, and, it, and I feel like it shows as if yeah. there was like lots of time and uh, money to, that went behind it, and really there wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm well, I'm incredibly proud of of uh, being in uh, involved with Benevolent Buckley Show. And then, absolutely, I try I try to tell everybody, you know, I try to share this as much as I can. Yeah. I'm I'm incredibly proud of. Uh, so that cauldron. We tried. We wanted to have dry ice in there for every um, yeah, we just ran uh, episode or well of the show. But after after the first episode, like it just dried out and died. Yeah, <laughs> it really does not last long. It will, and we bring that up too. And that was an accident, right? Ordering that cauldron that small. Yeah, was that an ac- a real yes. accident? It was like it was like Spinal Tap. It was you thought you were getting the full Stonehenge, and then you got the little guy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so this we wonderful, crank it to eleven. Wonderful. Um. Uh, oh, the audio engineer is there, Sam Hankel. So you don't actually see the the credits are in character of the show, but uh, Sam was uh, the actual um, sound guy for the show. You don't see him, and he was oh god, we had just met him. He didn't know any of us. He had to he had to crash uh, in in our little uh, bum hick town. And he just, he caught on right away. He was a lot of fun. But Kevin Kramer did the actual closing theme. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. I love I love this theme. He just sent it to me because he was going to be a guest on one of the episodes. And it was just like, I, I was like, Kevin, we have to we have to put this in the end of every episode. It has to be the outro. Yeah. So uh, I just, oh, that first episode, I feel it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was strong. And it was the first one we filmed as well. I feel Yes, we, we did. We did try and... Well, no, we shot. We did one. We shot five, in order six. of convenience of the guests. Guests, yeah. And I, and one of the great things about episode one is I feel that it, it's it it in within fifteen minutes or whatever it was, it really does kind of set up the world. So you get you see that there's segments. You kind of get to see that Joe is inept. His crew doesn't like him. There's there's a villain, uh, so to speak, with my character, uh, and then there's a guest. I mean, it really does quickly set up the world of Benevolent Buckley. But at the same time, it in no way tips its hand to do ridiculousness that the show, the depths yeah, of the show gets to, to. Uh, by the hit by episode six. I mean, it, it, it really, it's, it's, I, I think it's great. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I can't, I think that pretty much covers first episode. So let's move on to episode two. All yeah. right. Sounds good. See you guys on the next one.